Tutorial Scaling Up McMaster Egg Counting Method In this tutorial, we will demonstrate how to scale up the examination of stool samples using the McMaster Egg Counting Method. However, it will not discuss the McMaster Egg Counting Method for which we refer to the tutorial describing this method's standard operating procedures. In this tutorial, we will first show how the laboratory can be organized efficiently using the three consecutive steps of the McMaster egg counting method. Afterwards, these consecutive steps will be treated in more detail in order to optimize the procedure. The third part describes how the people in the laboratory can be assigned roles. We will finally give a few tips to guarantee the quality of each step. 1. Organizing the laboratory Based on the required equipment of the McMaster egg counting method, it can be divided into three consecutive steps. In the first step, the samples are ranked according to a unique number. Then, a defined quantity of stool is weighed. In the second step, each stool sample is suspended in flotation solution, which is followed by sieving the suspension and filling the McMaster slides. In the third step, the McMaster slides are examined microscopically. To efficiently organize the laboratory, it is recommended to create one workflow for these three steps. To do this, separate each step by performing each on a separate table and by ordering the tables. Table 1 is used for ranking and weighing the samples, Table 2 for completing the preparation of the McMaster egg counting slide and Table 3 for examining the McMaster slides. We will now illustrate two possible setups for this procedure using a specific color code. Step 1 is indicated in red, Step 2 is indicated in yellow and Step 3 is indicated in green. In the first example, the tables are organized in one line. In the second example, the tables are placed in an L shape. This is the example that we will discuss in detail in the following section. 2. Step-by-step -step procedure Step 1. Ranking and weighing the stool samples In the field, a unique number is randomly assigned to the stools of the subjects. In the lab, however, it is recommended to rank the samples according to their number. This will allow identifying any mislabeling from the field, such as a number that was accidentally used twice. In addition, it will facilitate quality control. It is recommended to split the total number of stool samples in half. This will allow weighing stool samples with two people and processing the McMaster in two parallel lines. To optimize the workflow, Put all stool containers at both the extremes of the table within reach of the two people weighing. Place all beakers filled with the right amount of stool and containing a spatula together in the middle of the table. This has three advantages. First, it is clear for the two people responsible for weighing who needs to examine which sample. Second, the same spatula is used exclusively for one sample across the entire process. That way, you can avoid the contamination caused by using the same spatula for weighing two different samples. Third, it creates a central point where beakers can be collected to bring to the next table to process the samples further. Step 2. Adding flotation solution, sieving the suspension and filling the McMaster slides. At one side of the second table, flotation solution is added to the sample. The sample is then immediately brought to the opposite side of the table, where the suspension is sieved by two different people. Similar to the first step, the two people sieve the suspension in parallel. In this setup, we replace the measuring cylinder by a dispenser, which not only speeds up the process, but also increases the repeatability within and between laboratory technicians. In the final step at this table, the McMaster slides are filled. To optimize the workspace available and to decrease possible errors, the two beakers used to process the sample are put one in the other with the McMaster slide on top. The pipette that was used to transfer the suspension is put aside in the beakers. Notice that all samples are still lined up according to their number. 
the lowest number is placed most closely to the edge of the table and should be processed first. Step 3. Examining the McMaster slides. It is important to start with the sample most closely to the edge of the table, as this sample was processed first and hence the eggs will have had sufficient time to float against the surface of the slide. To clearly indicate which slides have already been examined, it is recommended to put the beakers in the middle of the table, taking into account the order of the samples. 3. Assigning roles to the people in the laboratory. So far we have illustrated the three steps to process two samples using the McMaster egg counting method. Now we will continue with the different roles assigned to the people in the laboratory. In the setup presented, we work with six people who are not restricted to one step of the procedure, but shift from one step to another as samples are being processed. For example, we start with two people at table one for weighing the samples. These are indicated in red. Once a sufficient number of samples are weighed, a third person adds the flotation solution on table two. In the meantime, a fourth and fifth person sift the suspension. These people are indicated in yellow. As soon as all samples have been weighed, the two people who were previously weighing the samples in step 1 now move to table 2 and start filling the McMaster slides. When a sufficient number of McMaster slides are filled, a sixth person can start examining the slides. This person is indicated in green. Gradually, more people can shift towards the third table and examine McMaster slides. This process starts with person 3, who added the flotation solution, over person 4 and 5, who sieved the suspension, to person 1 and 2, who filled chambers. However, the number of slides available will not exceed the number of samples that need to be examined, and hence, one person will need to continue washing and filling the McMaster slides. 4. Quality control. Quality should be ensured before, during and after processing the samples. We will discuss the most important aspects. 1. The McMaster is based on the flotation of eggs, so make sure that the flotation solution has the required specific density. For saturated salt solution, the densitometer should indicate 1.2. 2. It is recommended that the senior researcher re-examines 10% of the slides. Any discrepancies in results should be discussed to increase the repeatability across lab te technicians. 3. Always verify whether the number of samples reported on the data collection sheet equals the number of samples processed. Also make sure each sample is only reported once. 4. When you reuse equipment, it is important to thoroughly soak all the sieves, containers and spatulas first. Then, carefully wash and dry all the materials. 5. Make sure that all labelling on the beakers is removed. 6. Disinfect all tables and wash your hands. Acknowledgements the raw material for this tutorial was collected during a field study financially supported by an institutional university project of the Flemish Inter-University Council. The Research Foundation Flanders supported the development of the tutorial through a postdoctoral mandate grants.